Old School Habbo Hotel is back. VR is in a very rough state and Shadow of the Erd Tree crashes onto the Steam Deck. I'm Ash Dixon and this is Jinx News. Habbo Hotel is back, baby. I'm talking the classic 2005 experience. Called Habbo Hotel Origins, the browser game has been relaunched exactly how we all remember it. It means we can relive the magic of infinitely looping that dance animation, racking up countless boyfriends and girlfriends, and begging your parents for those sweet Habbo credits. Because if you were a broke kid like me, you couldn't afford a WoW sub or a RuneScape membership. So instead, you spend your hours in the Falling Ferny rooms, clicking like a maniac so that one day you could be the proud owner of a chair or a potted plant. In fact, once you allow all that sweet nostalgia to wash over you and you actually deep it a little bit, you remember how cursed Habba Hotel actually was. Because that Falling Ferny we all played, it was basically the OG Hunger Games, with all those rich kids with their snuzzy premium haircuts watching us street rats flail about for their Habbo scraps. And I still remember getting dumped by my Habbo girlfriend for not being a Habbo club member. That sh changes you, bro. Plus, there was all the creepy roleplay and grooming that took place on that site. It always just boggles my mind that these online platforms existed and just gave predators unfiltered access to children and both the people who made them and the parents of those playing them were just like, yeah, this is fine. Like, throughout the expanse of human history, for 280,000 years, we were simple hunter-gatherers. For 1,300 years, we were all about that bronze. Yet for one young generation of human history, we were exposed to the absolute wild west that was the unmoderated online world, where our school days were spent chatting about our antics on Habbo Hotel or the most disgusting, disturbing videos that no 10 year old should ever have seen. And man, I've steered way of course from Habbo Hotel now, but hey, that's just what comes to mind when we venture back to 2005. Obviously, we're all adults now, so we can afford that sweet ferny if we want to. Not that we'd spend our hard-earned money on that trash. That's what $500 League of Legends skins are for. And I'm curious what you think. Do you plan to jump back into Habbo Hotel and relive your childhood? Which browser games did you love to play as a kid? Shout out to the Adventure Quest and the Stickman RPG players watching right now. Let me know your favorites down in the comments. We have some Ubisoft news now, and you may remember that back in November, they accidentally granted some Ubisoft Plus subscribers access to the early build of Beyond Good and Evil 20th Anniversary Edition Remaster. What a title. Well, Ubisoft being Ubisoft, they announced a release date for it on social media, then took it down, and then promptly released this trailer. So it's now been confirmed that the game will launch on all platforms on the 25th of June and it'll have 4K support at 60 FPS. There are also now treasure hunts that reveal more about Jade as well as new rewards as you explore Hillis. But in an update that fans of the original have been waiting for for quite some time, they might have just spilled the beans on the sequel. You see, Ubisoft posted this on their official site and if you scroll down, there's this little tidbit that has caught people's attention. Learn more about Jade's childhood and her link to Beyond Good and Evil 2 thanks to a new treasure hunt throughout Hillis. Now, seeing as the sequel has seemingly been in development for more than 15 years, this might, just might, be a sign that will be on the way soon. But this is Ubisoft we're talking about, so soon could very well be another 15 years. VR is once again showing signs of decline, and it's a shame because it's one of those technologies that is just so cool. But sadly for me, I'm one of those people that after just five minutes, it makes me want to vomit absolutely everywhere. And even if you don't suffer from VR sickness, there's few things I'd willingly have wrapped around my face for hours on end. It's also not nice to think about the additional price tag of buying a headset when you've already splashed out on a console or a gaming PC. And so it's no surprise PlayStation have basically given up on the PSVR 2. Despite having over 200 games available, according to one source, Sony have made deep cuts to VR games and that only two PSVR 2 titles are currently in development in-house. And it's not just Sony making cuts to VR. Apple have suspended work on the Vision Pro 2 and have instead shifted focus to a cheaper version of their mixed reality headset. And yeah, the Vision Pro was snazzy as hell with its googly eyes and thousands and thousands of cameras, but what is sold abysmally, even with its generous $3,499 price tag? 
Wow, color me surprised. It seems Apple has finally come to that extremely obvious realization too, and instead the upcoming slimmed down version with less cameras, a simpler headband, and smaller speakers will have a much more reasonable estimated price tag of $1,600. Okay, Apple, good luck with that one. I mean, think of how many months of our Patreon, Jinx Plus, you could get with that kind of money. I'm not gonna go into the exact amount. That level of maths is the kind of exclusive content you'll get access to if you sign up, so don't miss out. It's time now for the quick fire round. First up, Gamescom is just a couple of months away and it seems it's going to be Microsoft taking center stage. Xbox will be attending with their biggest booth ever where they'll be showing off upcoming games like Avowed, Age of Mythology Retold and the latest World of Warcraft expansion. Nintendo won't be making an appearance despite reportedly showing off the Switch 2 behind closed doors last year and Sony will also be giving it a skip as they have been doing since 2019. And while all three of those are massive gaming companies, none of them are the biggest. That's because NVIDIA is now the world's most valuable company, taking the throne from the likes of Microsoft and Apple. Now, from the general public, this news has generally been met with, what? Who dat? But in our world, we all know NVIDIA. They're the people who make those stupidly expensive graphics cards because everyone keeps using them to mine cryptocurrency. Luckily, that trend has died down in recent years, but AI has not. In fact, it shows no sign of stopping with no regard for humanity, like a monstrous seagull ruining your day at the beach. Kurva. And like seagulls, AI needs chips. Graphics chips, to be exact. And now NVIDIA are riding that wave to the top. At the time of writing, it's worth $3.39 trillion, meaning if it was a country, it would have the seventh highest GDP in the world, only closely behind the UK. And considering the state of things, NVIDIA will soon have the sixth highest GDP in the world. <laughs> Meanwhile, another company that's about to make a boatload of money is From Software, because you may have heard, but Shadow of the Earth Tree launched yesterday. As you would expect, Elden Ring has already shot up to the third most played game on Steam, but if you're playing it on the Steam Deck, you might not want to leave it inactive, because it can make it unplayable. Apparently, a hotfix is on its way, so while you wait for that, just make sure you don't leave it alone for too long. But do pay those like and subscribe buttons a visit. Enjoy Shadow of the Erd Tree over the weekend, and we'll see you Monday.